She sat down to color in a coloring book. She was carefully staying inside the lines. And all of a sudden, she grinned and she said, I'm going to color outside of the lines this time. Coloring outside the lines. Going to color outside of the lines this time. Coloring outside the lines. I'm going to color outside of the lines this time. Color outside of the lines this time. There was a group that was learning how to dance and move with particular steps they were supposed to find. And all of a sudden, someone jumped up and said, I'm gonna dance outside of the lines this time. Dancing outside of the lines, I'm gonna dance outside of the lines this time. Dancing outside the lines, I'm gonna dance outside of the lines this time. Dance outside of the lines this time. Next time the chorus comes around, you sing it. Teacher. She was a first year teacher trying to get things right. And she thought it was best to just toe the line. And the principal said to get through to the kids, you gotta teach outside of the line sometimes. Teaching outside the lines, you gotta teach outside of the line sometimes. Teaching outside the lines, you gotta teach outside of the lines this time. Teach outside of the lines this time. sit at the back of the bus and if she sat in front it would be a crime but that law was wrong so she made up her mind i'm gonna sit outside of the lines this time sitting outside the lines you gotta sit outside of the lines this time sitting outside the lines you gotta sit outside of the lines this time sit outside of the lines this time Sometimes your neighbor's from a different place, speaks a different language, knows a different faith. And if your neighbor's in need, you gotta cross that line. You gotta love outside of the line sometimes. Loving outside the lines, you gotta love outside of the line sometimes. Loving outside the lines, you gotta love outside of the lines this time. Coloring, coloring outside the lines, you gotta color outside of the lines sometimes. Coloring outside the lines, you gotta color outside of the lines sometimes. Color outside of the lines sometimes. Color outside of the lines sometimes. Song and Story Fest has been an inspiration and a joy for many people over the years. Some say it is one of the best kept secrets of the Church of the Brethren. It is an intergenerational camp which brings together music and stories. It is a venue for all who enjoy music and storytelling from the very young to the very old. This was the 15th consecutive summer for Song and Story Fest. 170 people attended the fest held at Camp Brethren Heights in Rodney, Michigan prior to this year's annual conference which was held nearby in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We were able to talk with director Ken Klein Smeltzer about the history and development of Song and Story Fest. It came, actually came out of a conversation that I had with uh, a couple of the m musicians, uh, Peg Lehman and Lee Cranbuehl at uh, annual conference. I think it was in Cincinnati. It was actually the year they got together and formed the group Kindling. But at that conference, we all went to lunch together one time, and they, they were talking about a few opportunities as uh, folk musicians and singers and songwriters in the Church of the Brethren, a few opportunities they had to get together and to listen to each other, to share ideas, or to bounce off of each other and be creative. And so that, in combination with uh, my work at Camp Peaceful Pines as program director, uh, kind of led me to put two and two together and to propose to our Camp Peaceful Pines board that uh, we turn one of our family camps into a, a song and story fest. Actually, 
my idea was first to have it be a song fest, but in talking to uh, Jim Lehman Pegg's husband, who's a storyteller and, and writer, we got to thinking, yeah, it would be good to include the storytelling as well. So uh, the next year conference was coming to Long Beach, California, and uh, uh, I decided to ask our, our camp board to turn one of our, our family camps into the Song and Story Fest. So, uh, and they agreed to do that. It, it required some additional financial outlay to uh, get all the leadership there and, and, and to expect more people, and, but they were willing to do that. And so that's how uh, Song and Story Fest came to be. The uh, first one was in 1997 before Long Beach Conference. Song and Story Fest is first and foremost a family camp. In other words, it's an intergenerational gathering of people of all ages for a week of camping together. Uh, I was I grew up in Illinois and I wasn't used to experiencing a week-long family camp. It wasn't until I moved to California and went to Peaceful Finds that I I experienced over many years the the fun and the the uniqueness of a of a week-long camp in which families are there together, sometimes extended families. And what's neat about it is First of all, there's something for everybody there. Um, it's good to have kids around as an adult to kind of remind you of your connections with uh, those older and those younger. Uh, it's good for the kids to be around adults and see that uh, behavior modeled and community living. And it's good for everybody in that while you're together, a lot of the time at a campfire or morning gatherings, which are intergenerational, uh, there's also workshop times and just play and free times in which you're free to be with the kids or be with the adults. The adults don't have to worry about their kids because they're either in a group or they're over in the playground playing or at the stream or whatever. And so it's a good chance for families to be together without having to be 24-7 with each other and in a trusting environment. This year's program included Jim Lehman, Michel Kumquat, Mike Stern, Patty Ecker and Louise Brody, Bill Jolliffe, and many others. Today, we are looking back on special moments from Song and Story Fests. The country has faced many disasters this spring, and floods have been in the news continually. Mike Stern wrote a song about floods, which we want to share with you. River water rising Rain still coming down The old farm's a lake but if the levees break, it'll damn near take this whole town. It's like living in a nightmare that you can't believe is true. How we'll clean up this mess is anybody's guess. Don't know how we'll make it through. I'm headed up to higher ground. I heard a stranger say With a hand held out to me Said we'd best be on our way and We don't have much money And we're running out of gas this crazy war goes on and now our house is gone god we pray this too will pass i'm headed up i'm headed up to higher ground to higher ground i heard a stranger say i heard a stranger say and with a hand held out to me with a hand held out to me said we'd best be on our way Across this country, all across this land, from east to west, folks will do their best to lend a helping hand. I'm headed up, I'm headed up 
to higher ground, to higher ground. I heard my neighbor, I heard my neighbor say, and with a hand held out, with a hand held out to me, said we'd best be on our way. water rising rain still coming down the old farm's a lake but if the levees break it'll damn near take this whole town i'm headed up i'm headed up to higher ground to higher ground i heard my neighbor i heard my neighbor say and with a hand held out and with a hand Said we'd best be on our way. We're headed up. We're headed up to higher ground. To higher ground. I heard the people say. I heard the people say. And with their hands held out. And with their hands held out to me. Said we'd best be on our way. The Church of the Brethren is one of the three major peace churches in the United States. We sometimes struggle to keep our focus on the peace mission. Some feel we need to do more. Our next guest, Linda K. Williams from the San Diego Church of the Brethren, may surprise and delight you. She has kept the mission of peace in her heart and taken action. She originated the bumper sticker, When Jesus Said, Love Your Enemies, I think he probably meant not to kill them. We asked her how the bumper sticker came about. I had, God started giving me songs oh, back in the 80s, and I had been intrigued by and impressed by, and maybe concerned by, you could say, Gandhi's quote that I think it's accurate that he said that the only religion in the world that didn't believe that Christianity was a pacifist religion were the Christians. And I, of course, was struck by the irony of it. And as a Church of the Brethren member, pacifist, uh, I totally be believe in our church's statement, all war is sin. And I wanted to do something that would get, give people an, kind of an aha moment about getting closer back to what Jesus actually taught and said. And so I said to myself, well, that somehow needs to be a song. And it was quite long in the inc incubation stage. And uh, the phrase in the original writing of the song was, when Jesus said, love your enemies, I really think he meant don't kill them. And when I offered the concept to Bob Gross of On Earth Peace as a potential bumper sticker or whatever they might want to do with it. Uh, he said, would you mind if I play around with the words a little bit? I said, sure. And I like his rewording better where it says, I think he probably meant don't kill them. And one of the comments that we've gotten from people who see the bumper sticker or the t-shirt is, well, now that's wrong. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Love it. And so in the original song, what I did was um, I went into the, the scriptures from the Bible. I went into a number of quotes from brethren leaders as far as what the brethren thought and philosophy and policies have been. And I included our church official statement that all war is sin and the phrase, um, unapologetic but non-confrontational from Tom Hurst. I included from Dale Aukerman the concept that what is done in the waging of war is 180 degrees opposite of what of Jesus and his love. And I used some quotes from David Radcliffe and uh, that all of that is opposite of uh, Jesus and his love, that God's way is a way of love. And I put this all together in a song, which I think covers a lot of the bases. Wasn't too sing-alongable, but it is available on the On Earth Peace website. 
which is, I think it's www.brethren.org slash OEPA. And then you go under resources and bumper stickers. And if you click around a few times, you'll find the song and the lyrics. We also asked, what have been reactions to your bumper sticker? I had one lady who was bent over in hilarious laughter <laughs> at it on, when she saw it on my car, and the irony of it just tickled her funny bone. And that was one reaction. And other people will say things like, you know, right on, yeah, that's it. And I did have a little note on my car window one time that said, you have your freedoms because of the people who have fought in the wars. And I respect their perspective, although I don't look, I'm not on that wavelength, but I respect the fact that they feel very strongly in that way. And um, I have also had a number of people who have shared uh, the airline steward, when I got on the airline with my bumper sticker on my guitar case, and he turned his head to the side and read it out loud. And this was during the um, height of the Iraq invasion, uh, the Iraq, you can call it invasion, you can call it the freeing of Iraq, Gulf War. Uh, and he said, well, I'm for the war. And then he paused and he said, but I'm for Jesus too. And of course, I had to move along and go take my seat. But I loved it because his face just displayed the cognitive dissonance of the fact that no, it doesn't compute if you say you believe in Jesus' teachings and you say you want to follow what Jesus did teach and preach and yet going to war and killing is not what Jesus taught. And so then I was able to offer him later. So I was out of the bumper stickers by that time. I was coming home from annual conference. And I gave him, my, I had a couple of the little stickers left. And he said something about that he was involved in a Bible study. And so I said, you know, I'd love to share these with you if you think you might want to just kind of use them as food for thought for your Bible study. And then my chiropractor said that he disagreed with it because he believed that um, Corinthians 13 did I get the right book, uh, said that if the government says to go to war, we're supposed to go to war. She told us that her original concept came from reading about Gandhi. Ken Klein Smeltzer shared with us, Song and Story Fest is an intergenerational camp for young and old. There is a clear effort to make 
children a part of the program. This is especially true at the evening campfire where just about anything can happen. is going the rounds of the Baptist, and you may have heard it too. I have a feeling it may be the latest gimmick poem. And I want you to imagine a, a round spot in the sand. One night I had a wondrous dream. One set of foot, footprints there was seen, the footprints of my precious Lord. But mine were not along the shore. But then some stranger prints appear, and I asked the Lord, what have we here? Those prints are large and round and neat, but Lord, they are too big for feet. My child, he said in somber tones, for miles I carried you alone. I challenged you to walk in faith, but you refused and made me wait. You disobeyed, you would not grow. The walk of faith, you would not know. So I got tired, I got fed up, and there I dropped you on your butt. <laughs> because in life there comes a time when one must fight and one must climb, when one must rise and take a stand or leave their butt prints in the sand. This is a joke about a taxi driver from New York City and a brethren pastor who are standing in line at the gates of heaven. And the pastor is a little way back. He died a few hours afterwards. And he watches this taxi driver get up to the pearly gates. And St. Peter sees him and says, Oh, brother, we're so glad you're here. We've been waiting for you. It's such a joy to see you. He snaps his fingers and angels come running from all directions. And they throw a white robe over him. And they put rings on his fingers and they say, That way, there is your room and it has all of the things you've ever dreamed of. Anything you can ever want is here for you waiting in heaven. And the pastor thinks to himself, Wow, this is how they treat taxi drivers. Just think of what I'm going to get. A few more people go and he gets up in line and St. Peter says, it's nice to see you, brother. You can head down that way with all the rest of them. And he said, now wait a minute. How is it that I, a brother and pastor, am just sent off with the rest of them, but yet this taxi driver from New York City gets the royal treatment? And St. Peter looked at him very solemnly and said, brother, while you preached, people slept, but while he drove, People prayed. <laughs> well, you know, I'm from the West, so that I actually, when I go, I go east, uh, and I went east to visit a farm in Iowa, and I, I was on a farm in Iowa, and the, the, the farmer was from the Ivester congregation. We have anybody here from Ivester Con Oh, right up there. Well, I'll tell you a story about a farm I visited there in Iowa. Yeah, well, I went on this farm, and I walked up into the farmyard, and all of a sudden I see this pig running across the, the barnyard there with a wooden leg. And I said, to the, I said to the farmer, boy, that I've never seen a pig with a wooden leg. Well, tell me about that pig. And he said, that's a special pig. That's a real special pig. Let me tell you about that pig. Two years ago, I was out uh, plowing in the back 40, and the tractor flipped over on me, you know, and that pig, for some reason, knew that I was in trouble and went to my wife there at the farmhouse, got her, made her come out to find me, got the tractor, and found me, and she saved my life. That pig saved my life. That's a very special pig. But I said to him, I said, what, what about the wooden leg? Well, no, that's a really special pig. Last year, last year, my wife was uh, coming up the, the, the road in a, in a truck, and went off the road into the ditch, and that pig came and got me out of the back, back 40. And I knew something was wrong. It was squealing and hollering. I followed that pig all the way, and I found my wife in that pickup truck, and I saved her, and that pig saved us, and that's a special pig. And I said, yes, but I just don't understand about the pig. Why does that pig have a wooden leg? He says, well, with a pig that special, you only want to eat them a little bit at a time. <laughs>
Next year's Song of Story Fest will be held July 1st to 7th, 2012 at a Brethren Camp near St. Louis, Missouri. We hope through this program, our little secret will get out. Perhaps in 2012, you will be able to attend and participate in our secret Song and Story Fest. Thank you for being with us today on Brethren Voices. This is Brent Carlson. Peace. <laughs> Strawberry, 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 strawberry.